Doreen Grand Pichet is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. <laughs> Sorry, I'm pushing buttons and I don't know what's happening today. Uh, Mary Kathy has written in and said, hello, I'm a behavior therapist. Can you uh, talk about screaming? Can, uh, and I'm, th I think the sentence here is, can it be sensory or automatic reinforcement? Because there's no reason for that. So can you talk about that at all? Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that. And it's, I love talking with behavior therapists, yeah. obviously, but also not just because they already have, uh, you know, brought in some suggested functions of a behavior, but also because it helps to talk to to kind of open the world a lot my my mission is to kind of, to help behavior therapists see outside of the world of behavior therapy and so um yes mary kathy it's possible that and and for the for our viewers there are essentially when as a behaviorist when a behavior occurs you try to identify uh why it's occurring what is the reason that is occurring and, and and the behavioral lingo we call that um the function of the behavior and uh, can i can i just squeeze in here because i know you guys know this but we don't is that what's what you guys have taught me is that there's always a reason why there yeah. is no random behavior that we look at things our kids do and we go that's just the autism that's just random but you guys say no there's a function there yes that's right and what Mary Kathy is asking is, is, are, is it an automatic function or a sensory function? And I want to explain what those are. Sensory function is basically it is satisfying some sort of sensory need, which, you know, falls under the automatic uh, category of functions. So let's say the child needs to, is craving hearing that sound and therefore they scream in order to produce a sound that they want to hear uh you know so there's lots of different things like a lot of our kids who spit they're not spitting because they have any animosity they're spitting because they actually want to see the spit uh fall and it's a visual sensory experience for them so um in this case, and, and it could very well, Mary Cathy, it could be an automatic uh, function, which means there's something about screaming that is satisfactory to the child, and we don't know because it's serving some automatically reinforcing function for the child. But keep in mind that it could also be communication. So the child could also be either communicating pain or they could be communicating frustration, uh, annoyance, uh, anything like that. So, uh, and of course, it could also be uh, a, an attention function, which means when they have screamed, others have attended to the screaming by saying, hey, stop screaming, or what are you doing? Or why are you screaming? That hurts my ears. And all of those types of things cause uh, the behavior to increase as well. Uh, let's not forget that negative attention is is just as powerful as positive attention. So, you know, with the screaming, I'm afraid I have to say that it could be a multitude of things. It could be automatic. It could be attention based. And uh, it could also be more than that, which means it could be a communication of pain or some other uh, issue that's going on with the child. So what do you do? If you're the if you're the behavior therapist and this is and the screaming is happening from and let's talk about it from a couple of people's point of view but if you're a behavior therapist that's working with kids on the spectrum and your child is screaming what do you do? So there's uh, the the behavior therapist will do what's called an FBA which is a functional behavior assessment. So they will look at all situations where the child is screaming and they'll figure out what happened before it and what's happening after it. And the reason they do that is because what happens before it, for instance, uh, someone asks the child to do something and the child screams. Well, in that case, it would become very obvious that the child is basically trying to avoid or escape a situation. Um, or nothing is happening right before it, but the child screams and then someone comes over and says, 
hey, why are you screaming? That would make it very obvious that it's an attention function because the child screams in order to get attention. So you find out kind of what the function is. And with each of those functions, there's a different series of behaviors or, or treatments that you do. Uh, in all cases, the, the, I guess the bottom line, just to summarize, because there are many functions and many different interventions per function, but to summarize, the idea is that you do not allow a challenging behavior to get the desired response. Instead, you teach the child a, le a more adaptive behavior in order to gain the appropriate response. Let's say the child screams in order to get attention. In that case, you want to make sure you do not give attention when the child screams, but rather you teach the child some other way of communicating appropriately in order to get attention, like saying, you know, hello, I need attention here, or just handing you a card that says, come play with me, or whatever it is. Let's say a child uh, screams in order to escape a demand. You do not let the child scream in order to avoid a demand. Uh, in other words, if they're in classroom and they scream, unfortunately, you got to keep them there. But if they uh, want to leave the classroom, you teach them a more adaptive way of leaving the classroom. So it's, it's a lot, but it's, it's, you know, basic. It's like, do not let the child use screaming as a form of getting what they want or as a form of communicating. Now, if it is pain that we're talking about and the child is screaming because they have pain, again, you want to make sure that you are helping the child. And this is one of the most important things. A lot of our, a lot of times our kids, and even when we talk about sensory or when we talk about automatic functions, to me, even within the realm of automatic functions, there's always some reason. So let's say the child has a sensory need to scream. Well, find him something else that gives him that sensory pleasure so he doesn't continue doing the screaming. Let's say maybe he can wear uh, noise, head, noise uh, reducing headphones like Bose headphones and hear sounds that are going to give him the same stimulation he would need, the screaming will go away. Let's say he is communicating pain. As I said, teach him a different way to communicate pain. Uh, there's always things you can do to help the child's behavior be more acceptable to, to in society. Yeah, there's a lot of fine points within that. Um, and we've yeah. done lots of videos on it, uh, but hopefully yeah. that will be helpful to you. We got a lot of questions coming in and some that I want to get to that came in last night. Um, Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.